We'll start with our usual broadcast section and then we'll move on to the daily newspapers to preview tomorrow night's game. We'll begin with Sky Sports and Gail. Gail. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. Deadline day for you. A little bit crazy, Calm. a little bit bonkers. Calm. Don't believe you. No. Well, I'm, I'm the head coach, so um, I don't get too much involved in, in, in the nitty gritty of the deadline day. I'm, uh, I'm focusing on the next day's training and preparing the team to play Fulham. But you must be hanging on that phone. You're about to make a, a British transfer record signing. At what point did you find out? Was there a, oh, thank goodness for that. I haven't stayed up till too late for no reason. Oh, I've been involved too long to know that you can't, there's some things you can't control. And from my perspective, I couldn't do anything at that point to change anything. So. I found out when it was done and obviously I'm very, very pleased because we've got a fantastic player um, and we're looking forward to working with him. Have you had any time to sort of sit, chat? What's he like? How excited are you? Mm. Might we see him tomorrow night? Well, we'll see. We've got to go through the paperwork and um, he's got to make sure he gets the clearance and uh, all that. But uh, yeah, I've spoke to him. My, my Spanish isn't great and his English is not great, so we needed a translator. But again, we'll get there. Um, Impressive young man, and again, really looking forward, to, really excited to, to work with him. On the other side of it, um, a deadline day that didn't quite go to plan, if you're hacking Z uh, How is he? Is he back in the country? Is he training? Where is he kind of mentally? Yeah, he's back in the country. He trained this morning. Um, it's these stories, it won't be the first, it won't be the last. Um, He's a, he's a professional player, uh, he, he, he understands the situation, he's committed to us, he's uh, available for the squad for the, for the game against Fulham and um, he'll be an important player for us for the rest of the season. Um, somebody just made a joke about how many people in the room been quite close to how many people might be in your dressing room yeah. and this is going to be, is it quite a challenge, keeping everybody happy? I mean you've talked a lot about being a very people's skills being a strength of yours. There's a lot of egos in there and there's not many shirts that are going to be filled every single week. Yeah, and, and I think the challenge is the, the right word, but I'm certainly not complaining about it. I mean, it's, uh, it's exciting. It's um, a test for, for me, of course, and for the staff and, and for everybody, and, but it's an exciting one. We've got uh, a lot of really good players. Um, they have to, we have to create an environment where there's competition where there's healthy competition and they can push each other and at the same time understand that there's going to be frustration at times because only 11 can play but that's how it is um, we've got uh, a lot of important games and we need to improve our results so it's about playing about supporting the team and being ready to play thanks Gail Alex Aldrin hi Graham hi almost two weeks now without a game how have you used that time and is it true you took the players to meet some soldiers what was the reasoning behind no, that no um, we, we, we did some um, we did some uh, off the pitch activity, a bit of leadership, a bit of um, a bit of uh, teamwork, just outside of this environment. But mostly, it's been training. Mostly, it's been working on the on the on the on the team and and how we want to play, and of course, integrating some new players and getting some injured players up to speed. So a bit of everything, really. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> Fulham tomorrow. You played them very recently. Currently above. Chelsea in the table, just how much have they impressed you this season? Well they've had a fantastic season, um, <clears throat> credit to them all there, all the, all the staff and um, uh, Marco of course and, and the players, they've, they've, they've really performed well and they're there where they are on merit, it isn't, uh, it isn't, it isn't luck, they deserve the points they've had and they'll be a tough game. <laughs> Is it a good thing playing the same team so soon after a defeat? Well, I, well, we'll see. I mean, uh, we're looking forward to the game. Um, the the memory of defeat is is still there for us. So we we, we felt that, of course. Um, it was at a pretty low, you know, low point for us in terms of probably played a little bit better. In fact, we played better than, than getting no points. But uh, Jal losing Jal after an hour and going down to ten men was pretty much summed up the. The moment we were in at that point, and um, and then it was about showing strength and, and being together, which we did. Uh, came through that period, and um, at the same time, it's uh, not a nice memory losing. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Alex again for BBC. Hi, Graham. Hi. 
Um, eight new players coming in. Do you think you'll need more more time to shape how you want this team to play? Obviously, a new manager coming in here anyway, and then so many players you'll have to give the message to again. Well, I think coaching is. I've said before, coaching is a process. Um, yeah, time helps that, but I'm, I've never been one to sit here and say that uh, that you you need that. It helps, um, but you guys will talk about time and pressure and all the rest of it as we go through the through the days and weeks. I'm sure. Um, I'm just looking forward to working with the team. Looking forward to working with the players. I'm excited by the second part of the season that we have here. Uh, happy that the January window is closed. Happy that we can just move forward and, and, and work with the players. And there's been a story that you can only include three new players into your Champions League squad uh, going forward. Have you decided who those players are going to be? Well, we've got. I think we've got a few b- bit of time before we have to make the decision. But yeah, it's it's we're aware of who we need to speak to. And are you able to say who they are? No. Okay. Simon Athletic. I was actually going to ask a similar question. So is that going to be a bit of an awkward conversation for the guys, those that are missing out, Graham? Because obviously everyone wants to play in the Champions League. Yeah, of course. And it's, there's going to be a few awkward questions. That's that's the reality of where we're, where where we are. A few awkward conversations because um, only eleven can play, and only a certain amount can be in, in squads. So there's always going to be ones that have been disappointed. And it's about being as honest and open and um, respectful uh, uh, and transparent as you as you, as you can. And um, again, create an environment where you respect the fact that people want to play, the fact that you respect the fact that players want to compete and help the team. But they have to be patient and be, make sure they're ready to play and, and perform and help us win. Would Joao Felix still be in contention even though he's only a loan signing? He's in contention, yeah. 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 Thanks. Rob, Sky. Uh, and a £300 million spent this month, £300 million before you got here. Does that bring huge pressure on you for those players to deliver and knowing that that might impact the money then in the summer to spend as well? And obviously a lot of people look at it saying, well, it's quite a gamble to spend so much at, at once on players. Mm. I think uh, everybody that's been in this room for the last four months, the word that we've always spoke about is pressure. So. That's not going to change. Um, clearly, if you spend money, that the, the the external noise goes up. Again, I, I, I understand that. Um, I've also said resources is one thing, and spending money is one thing. But you need to be able to align them. You need to be able to make the right decisions. You need to be able to provide a, a culture, a team, an environment, because it's not the amount that you spend on its own that gets success. I think it's more than that. You'll have seen today these plans for a football regulator. You've been obviously throughout the leagues. How, how do you feel about that in terms of what it can do for the game? Yeah, I'm, it's not something I'll give a massive amount of thought for, but of, of course the, the, we're custodians of the game, we're custodians of our, our club. We, we want everything to, to run as, as well as it, as it can. Adam Newsom. Hi, Grant. Hi. Um, what's the latest with injuries? Are Reese and Ben Chilwell expected to feature against Fulham? And What's the situation with Wesley Fofana? Because it's been quite a long time now when the hope was maybe three weeks mm. after he re-injured. So we've got um, Ben Chilwell, Rhys James, Raheem and Ruben back in the squad. Um, not 90 minutes, but but certainly in the squad. Wesley's been training partly with the team. He'll be stepping that up next week. Um, and then we're still without Dennis, Pulisic, Kovacic, Kante and Breuer. With the new signings and, and these guys coming back, does it feel like a, a true second half of the season for you now? Well, it's just I think whether it's just the January close, the window closing, um, combination of that, uh, we've had a, a little two-week break that has felt like uh, a pause. But we, as I said, it's, a, it's still a lot of football to be played here, um, and we're excited for that. We're excited for the for the remaining matches, and, and we need to. Um, as quickly establish the team as, as quickly as we can and perform well and, and win some matches. Okay, we'll do two more and then we'll do the, the dailies. David Day, Hi, David Day with Gazette uh, First question is about Jorginho. What led to his departure? Well, firstly, um, uh, for the four months I've worked with him, he's been fantastic. Um, great person. I think when you look at his service to this club, he's been brilliant, um, what he's achieved. I think sometimes you look at uh, you have to make a decision as a football club with the contract situation he had, 
and the opportunity he had to, to, to secure something a little bit more for his family. It was one of those situations, a bit of a win-win-win. And um, uh, obviously, from my perspective, I wish him well. He's a, he's a top professional and a top person. You have eight new players. Their profile is quite similar, you know, young, rising stars. How do you think they can change your team in the, for the next few months? Well, I think it's it's a combination of a few things. There's a yeah, there's a youthful dynamic there. I think the, you can see the, the sort of direction we've gone down in terms of uh, the type of player we've we've tried to sign. Uh, we're trying to build something for the for the now and for the future. Um, and it's about it's always about how they help the ones that are here as well and how we lift performance. Of course, we've had a pretty unprecedented, I would say, injury situation uh, to deal with here as well. So lots of things have happened. We hope that we've learned a lot from that period. We've gained a lot of strength from that period. And um, as I said, we can attack the second half of the season with positivity and we'll look forward to it. Thank you. Last question, broadcast, Jerry from Texas. Graham, Jerry here. Um, Hi. When you, when you arrived, the new owners said they were quite determined to end the uh, culture of so many young academy players going on loan and trying to create a pathway into the first team. But with so many signings coming in, is that, is that now reversed that policy or put on hold at least? No, no, I don't think so. I think um, you've got to manage the both parts. It isn't easy with, with the aspirations of the club, generally anyway, to take players from the academy into the first team in the Premier League. But certainly, as you go higher in terms of the demands of this club, but you know, for example, Lewis Hall has has has, has, has had an opportunity and has played first team football this year from the academy. He's 18 years old. That's not it's not uh, you know it's not straightforward to do. But uh, that that part of the job doesn't change. It's just, of course, we have to also look at how we can strengthen the team and help the team from from the market as well.